Hey, welcome to today's album review. Um, by the way, please keep the album reviews coming because we're not getting enough requests. Um, we get loads of requests for our reaction videos, but we don't get nearly enough for our album reviews. Um, so, Brett doesn't know what we're going to be react, um, not react, what we're going to be reviewing. He has no idea, and I'll be interested to know about when, I, when he does find out in a second if he knows anything about this particular band or not. Um, because for me, they ring a bell, but I don't know anything about them. I've got, uh, maybe Brett will, so let's see. So I'll share the screen and let's have a look. So it's from Scrambled59. I'm going to recommend Vessel by 21 Pilots. Um, the, this album means quite a bit to me. At the start of secondary school, my older sister was really into 21 Pilots at the time, and that kind of passed on to me with Vessel probably being the first album I've listened to from beginning to end. So as I said earlier, I've kind of heard of 21 Pilots, I think, but I just can't really, I don't know, place who they are or what songs they've done. Brett, what about you? Yeah, I, I'm in the same camp with you here, Cappers. Um, I, I've heard of 21 Pilots. I can't think of, and the only thing that still comes to mind is there used to be a program on Channel 4 called Trigger Happy TV. <laughs> uh, which is like a prank kind of TV program in the UK from like the 90s, late 90s, early noughties. Um, and what was really good about it, it used to have actually really cool kind of songs on there. I get the feeling one of the songs maybe from there may have been by 21 Pilots. So I think that that's sort of like that sort of um, British grungy indie kind of Brit pop sort of era but then I could be totally wrong they could be for the <laughs> American stuff there but that's sort of what's coming to mind but yeah like you heard of them I like to think I probably know one of their songs if I heard it but I couldn't give you the name of that so it's annoying because I generally like to think I know a little bit of one of them. Right, enough to, if I know enough to recognise them to at least know something of why I would recognise them so yeah mm -hmm. um, hopefully it's some um, good songs or a recognisable song at least um, on this potential album well, let's have a look at the album on Wikipedia. So, Vessel is the third studio album by American musical okay. duo 21 Pilots. <laughs> so, it's released in 2013. Um, so, let's have a look and see what genre it is. According to this, it's alternative hip hop, electro pop, hip hop, indie pop, rap rock, pop, ele electro electronic alternative rock, indie rock. So, quite a lot of genres. Uh, there, going uh, I think all the I probably didn't even get any one of those ones right at all. Didn't get the, <laughs> na <laughs> the nationality right. Didn't get any sort of the genres <laughs> right. Do you know they pretty much said everything there? Um, anything else of interest here? Lovely was released as a single in Japan. Um, let's have a look at the tracks then. Do you recognise any of these? It's it's forty seven minutes forty. 47 minutes 44 seconds long the standard edition so ode to sleep holding on to you my grain house of gold nothing rings any bells for me here there are some uk eu bonus tracks that we're that we're not going to do i think we'll just stick to the standard um album we won't do the korean and japanese ones either <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just do the first the first 12 songs i think the standard edition if that's all right with you yeah that's fine with me and um, like you yeah i don't recognise any of those particular songs either. But again, it seems the type of thing I'm probably more likely to probably recognise anything if we hear it. Uh, but by the looks of it, I, I don't don't think so. Like I said, I was way off with who they are and what they're about. So, um, But I, I'm so intrigued and um, looking forward to seeing what we hear from this. Yeah, so just click on 21 Pilots. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to expect because their genres are kind of so varied. Just, I really don't, I've got no idea um, like who they're maybe a little bit similar to. Um, absolutely no idea what to expect from this. Did it say anywhere on Wikipedia like like associated acts or similar? Sometimes they sometimes have that, don't they? In the info bits. 
musical style. It's been described as alternative hip hop, electro pop, indie pop, pop, all, just all like genres, mate. Basically everything. <laughs> um, so it says because the duo has, because of their mix of many genres, the duo has been difficult to cate- categorize. Um, in response to criticism of their style as trying to be all things to everyone, Joseph responded, I'm not trying to be that. I'm being what I want to be for myself. It's actually quite interesting because I wonder if like each song on this particular album is going to be, you know, very different to pre- the previous ones. Um, early material is post emo, following b- bands such as My Chemical Romance and Dashboard Confessional. Um, ah, at the time of their major label debut album, Vessel Twenty One Parts was described as an indie rock duo. So maybe we can expect some indie rock. The album featured a fusion of rap, piano pop, rock, and electronica. So. Look, we could go on and on about them, but I guess the best way to find out is to just shut up and listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're looking forward to it, Brett? Um, yeah, you know what? I know we say it all the time, because um, why, why wouldn't we? But um, yeah, just purely the fact, you know, there's going to be a lot on there. So, if this doesn't have variation, then there's... <laughs> I don't know what will, yeah. Yeah, unless they're all variations are all within the same same song. But um, no, and I think it, it is way more to my kind of style of, music and even though loads of genres on there um again the theme for that so yeah actually quite uh looking forward to to this one yeah me too very intrigued just to find out what 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 this is all, all about yeah um so we're gonna head off and listen to the album and we're gonna be back with you guys in a few seconds so we've now listened to the album um so yeah brett tell us what you thought of it then okay um i'm gonna start with a little little story because i watched this not that long ago um the class of 92 and there was a footballer on there called phil neville and he was talking about how as a kid he was always told he needs to knuckle down on one position that he can never make it being a jack of all trades you know, play multiple positions. He had to pick a position and stick to it. And he thought that was a load of tosh. He thought I could still be professional by doing that. And this is how I feel this this album. I feel like nothing have to you've got to knuckle down one particular genre and to succeed. Whilst this one, and we looked at it, it looked like there's a lot of different genres within this. And I generally thought, how's it? Is it it's just going to be one specifically specific genre and then? But this literally was a mix of <laughs> absolutely all genres. Uh, it, it, it blew me away in those regards. We also reviewed an album a while back now um, by an artist called Tyler the Creator. And I remember enjoying and praising it because it was like nothing I heard before. And it's the same with this as well. Um, this is like nothing I've really sort of heard. I think I've heard of it in, in part, but all together in this sort of way. Um, and it surprised me that I've not really heard or known anything about 21 Pilots. Um, <laughs> I really liked it. There was a game, like Tyler Craig, there's a lot of elements and for some reason it, it it's mixing quite well and does work quite well. And there were a few songs that I thought that were generally okay. Um, I think it was the same pretty much throughout the album. Not that it wasn't variation, as in, um, I think all the songs were on par with one another, if that makes sense. They're all just as good as each other, really. Um, and yeah, I, I, it was funny also looking to see that they've also released other albums. And I noticed and saw that other albums were actually, the ones after this one had done better in the charts this one hadn't done as well as some of the other ones so it's made me really interested in 20 pilots i would really like to hear a bit more of them and i thought this was a good solid album okay thank you so yeah like you said we we didn't know if it was going to be a mix of genres mid-song like or whether it's going to be like one song would be one particular genre the next one would be a different type and yeah as it turned out it was just a kind of whole mix um, through you know throughout each each song, um, so I think what came to mind, like you said, you, you've heard nothing like this before. Neither have I, but 
the closest thing that I can think of in terms of one song, I don't know anything about else about really about this this group, would be Bloodhound, Bloodhound Gang, The Bad Touch. <laughs> it kind of had that little feel to it. I don't know, something about it reminded me of that because that, I actually listened to that song when I thought of it and I kind of saw a little bit of resemblance. Um, so Bloodhound Gang is kind of also a little bit of that sort of rapping stuff that goes on and has that kind of feel to it. Um, so yeah, for me, um, I enjoyed listening to it. Um, there was obviously a lot going on in the songs. Um, I think if we were to compare it to the other album that, um, I think it's scrambled 59, the guy that, um, requested this and the previous song, uh, previous album called the Coldplay one X and Y. I think the difference is with, at least with X and Y, I managed to say, right, I actually really like this song and this song. There were a few songs I actually really liked. Whereas with this album, like you, kind of like you said, it was kind of all pretty much on a par. Um, nothing, most of, the, most of the songs didn't stand out for me. There is one I can see on there that I would say was the best. That I probably liked more than the others. And there's another one that was probably second best. Um, so maybe that's all that was lacking. Maybe a song that, really really kind of was like oh yeah i really like, love this this is a song that i'm really gonna like and li- want to listen to again and again um but yeah apart from that i'd say it was uh, really interesting to listen to and like you kind of surprised i'd never come across them because i've always said like to you that i, I like pop music and i've always said kind of pop music kind of branches out you've got the cheesy pop right in the middle like pop 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 stuff and then you've got you know like r&b kind of pop um you know nothing too hard but dance pop you know not, not the real hardcore techno stuff but just the kind of the catchy chorus kind of thing same with pop rock so this kind of was my thing because it it was all of those things you know it was the kind of a, a bit pop rocky a bit pop dancey a bit kind of pop rappy so it kind of had everything going on just a shame maybe that there wasn't a song that i could really really liked that's the only kind of negative I can think of. Um, so the first song is, uh, oh, how do I pronounce that? Ode to Sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously it's the first song, didn't know what to expect. Um, it was more rappy than I expected, but that was only the beginning. I didn't realize it was, <laughs> it was gonna suddenly go on to something else. So first thing I heard was rap. Uh, then it moved on to what I would describe as kind of like indie sounding almost like a di- completely different song. Um, but I, co- I was quite liking it. And then it kind of went, up, went on to what I would describe as pop rock. And I was just like, okay, this is really weird. It's sort of changing a lot here. Then it went back to rap, then back to the indie, which is probably the, the part that I like the best. Um, just like totally different songs combined. I, didn't, I just didn't see a link between the different elements. And then it went back to what I would describe as pop rock again. But if I actually kind of just stop thinking about everything, like what's happening, what's it changing to? I think if I just look at it from a general picture, then I actually quite like the song, if, you see, if that makes sense. Because of course, we're reviewing it, so I'm focusing a lot on what, what's happening during the song, um, all the changes that are being made. But yeah, that was yeah pretty good. Yeah, um, I, I was going to say this right at the end when we do a sort of song. I'll just say it now, just on the point you made there, because I think we're trying to review it as well. It's quite. Different. I would really like to go back and listen to this album, and not have not the pressure, but as in to try and concentrate to, especially for the first time, not knowing what's going on. So we had this sort of yeah, an eerie electric start, okay, and then into this rap bit, and then yeah, all the rock indie stuff, and it sort of went back to it again, and. And it's clear so anything that it starts with you know you're not going to have that all the way through it's going to change at some point i think maybe there's one song where it didn't do that actually um where there's going to be some changes you're going to sort out and it felt like with a lot of the songs three or four different songs within one but like i said for me it did kind of work um and i, I can't explain how or why but yeah this was not what i was expecting to to be hearing um and I said it still was confusing by sort of all the way through um, the album. Like you, I preferred on this particular track the sort of the um, indie pop elements of it. 
And to be honest, I think that's generally fair to say for most of the songs that we're going to be listening to as well. But um, yeah, it, it got me intrigued uh, enough so where I wanted to hear a bit more and see what more were, what was going to be. And I thought maybe that first one was going to be the ex- what we normally refer to as the experimental um, song on the album. But to be fair, I don't think there is one on this. I think they're all on par with that one there. So it followed through with a lot of the other songs as well. But yeah, overall, yeah, quite quite liked it, looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, so the second song was Holding On To You. Again, had that rap start, then sort of more rock pop, back to rap. What I'd say, I've, I've said this about this song, but it's actually in general, it's the whole album as a whole. It, even though it's rap, it doesn't feel like cool rap. Like, you no, know, what was the previous album we just listened to? Um, that uh, Central from, Sea. Yeah, that's like proper, like, you know, cool rap right, <laughs> that all the, the, the youngsters <laughs> listen to. Whereas this, this is kind of like, I can't explain it, almost like kind of like cheesy rap. Like, you know, this isn't like what you want to be seen <laughs> yeah. listening to, if, if that makes any sense. Um, um, I, I, felt, I thought the first song was better than this one. I was just a um, I'd say this song had less change-ups. It wasn't quite as changey, if it makes sense. Um, but it was certainly more than more than listenable, though. Yeah, um, it's funny you say that with like the, the sort of not cool rap, um, because I, I think a guy even mentioned it a bit later on, which I'll talk about when we get to that song um, as well. And you also mentioned in the intro about um, Blood Hangout, uh, Blood Hangout, Bad Touch. Now, I've referred to a lot of different artists and types of songs throughout these different reviews, um, different things of the songs. The only reason I never went down that route, because you're right, it's very much like that. I think I've always seen that as a more sort of a parody, it's like taking, not taking the big but it's like a, a funny song, whilst I think these guys, they're taking it quite seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not a disrespect to, to anyone saying there. But um, so I put here this it's like a real indie mix and rock mix with like Panic at the Disco and Stoke Patrol, which are two kind of very different things. But again, it, it kind of works. As you said, it didn't mix as much as the one previously, um, but sort of goes on really well. And um, yeah, like I said, it, it just it has a bit of twist, but not too much, and it it, it kind of works. And just a nice, good song to, to listen to. Okay, next one was Migraine. So it kind of had that alien voice to start with. Again, that kind of uncool rap, but I actually quite quite liked it. Um, and then this sort of very alien style singing in parts, not the whole song. Um, I would also say this was the, 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 the rappiest song so far, had the most rap in it, I think. Um, I quite like the chorus of this. Just found it very unusual, this song. Um, I guess, like, as with most of them. Um, I'd say it was above average. Um, and I mentioned the, uh, the alien voice at the beginning. Well, towards the end, second half of the song, that, that alien sort of singing has, has long disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm like that. I really like that intro, like the sort of alien synth, synthesized kind of uh, intro voice there. I was hoping it was going to be a lot more, but it wasn't. The game, we always had loads of these different elements, some of the other tracks, and it it kind of worked. Um, again, how and why, I'm not sure. I was then thinking at this point, is this going to get too much? Is this the only way it's all the way through and just be... But uh, I say at this point, it's all working okay. Um, and yeah, there was, like, it was sort of like a verse slash chorus. Like it was hard to tell. And I think this is what you were saying earlier in your thing, like when nothing really stood out. It's hard to remember a lot of these songs because they didn't really have what you like as a catchy chorus. Um, but yeah. it was like a pop element of the verse and the chorus. So, yeah, it, it was, an, again, an all right um, song. So then we had House of Gold. I felt this sounded a little bit kind of country, Celtic sort of style. Um, I quite liked it. quite like it so far. I, I put down a bit early, and it was early days. At that, at that moment, um, I sort of described it as a kind of simpleish song, um, especially compared to the others, and sort of being played on. I don't know if it's, I'm not very good at instruments. I put possibly a banjo, some kind of instrument. I don't know. Um, and it was sort of did spice up a little bit, but there were no big change ups with, with the styles with this one. 
Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't bad overall. Didn't mind it. Yeah. So as I've talked about before, there's normally the experimental song. Now this is probably the only album where I'll probably say this one. So this song is like the opposite of the experimental song. This is a song that is the least experimental in terms of their genre. This is something different to what they've been doing normally, if that makes sense. So normal to everyone else, but less hmm. experimental to, if that makes sense there. But like I said, yeah, it had this sort of um, folky um, sort of feel to it, which I looked more into. And there is actually a genre they've put for this one. And the genre is uh, Americana which is a blend of folk music, gospel, blues, country, jazz, R&B, and rock and roll, so all these sort of hardcore American elements, uh, which I, I, I kind of get where it's coming from from there. So I feel it's also quite similar to who we had in England slash Ireland, Mumford & Sons. I said it's a really sort of folky one. This is my favourite one so far. Um, the one we had before had sort of like the most rap in this, obviously had, I think, the least rap probably in it. Um, it was a short, sweet song, really, really enjoyable, and one I would put onto uh, a potential playlist. Mm -hmm. Then we had Car Radio, had a speaking start, had quite a sort of long instrumental parts to it as well. Um, what I've described as kind of rap, sort of bit kind of speaky, rappy, um, and kind of like dancey, sort of techno instrumentals. Um, and even a little bit of almost sort of death metal vocals surf thrown in for good measure as well. And then um, back to normal vocals. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure what I thought of this one. This was uh, quite a, a bit going on. Um, yeah, it was, it was okay. Yeah, uh, again, a lot going on this one. I, I quite like this one. Um, I like the start. Yeah, as you say, it was sort of a rappy talking bit. But as you say, it's not like a... <laughs> <laughs> a cool rap kind of thing um, and it's not very dark it's, it's literally talking about and apparently I looked at it, this is actually based on a true story where he was mm. late for college and someone actually stole his car radio which he sort of said at the right at the end there yeah um, I also found out he actually performed this um, at Radio One's live um, big weekend and there is mention because that was obviously last weekend here as well not when he performed it but the fact that the same sort of festival type thing was was there and I was sort of thinking that and thought this is probably the most you because I couldn't understand why we haven't heard enough in the UK um, and I can see why people in the UK won't like this one out of all of them I think it was just enough about mixture to it um, from it so we had the sort of rap bit then it went to like a real techno key techno key techno style um, club type sort of music and then back to him trying to tell his um, story about how his car um, radio got got stolen um but like i said it, it seemed all weird and stuff but it, it kind of worked and i liked it okay then we had semi-automatic had a sort of beepy like almost sort of early 90s or 80s video game sort of sound to it um it's not bad but i wasn't so keen on the the shouty parts i don't like it when you know when you when in a song when people start sort of shout shouting when they're singing um and the, the sort of the chorus again i don't know if it is the chorus but there was like a main bit <laughs> seemed like the chorus to me that sounded pretty pretty good um so yeah it was a pretty pretty average one really yeah um so again band of put here is sort of like um empire of the sun or mgmt which I think is very similar of the same sort of time periods um, that 21 Pilots are doing all their stuff here. Um, I also imagined, I can imagine, um, again, it's again quite niche for some people, but the Inbetweeners TV program that we had here, where they had music um, between scenes and stuff, it was very similar to that. So it felt very British indie um, pop kind of thing. Um, and what I found most interesting is that it was quite an upbeat relaxed kind of tune for a title which was obviously referring to a gun i presume that being semi-automatic unless it's due to a car i don't know um but um yeah um an all right one again i put it on par with some of the others we've listened to um but did did quite like it so the next one was screen i thought it was a really great start i think it's always like first impressions of a song are like really really key i think Quite often I can hear like a song, like 
just from the first few seconds, I realized, no, I don't like it. Um, but this was off to a good start. So I wrote down, I hope it doesn't change up too much. Um, and as it went on, I was like, yeah, I really like this. Um, probably the best song so, so far. And, and it, for me, it's probably the best song on the whole album um, after listening to the other songs as well. So I think the difference with this one, this song compared to the others, is that I like the whole song rather than just parts of it because obviously it changes so much, all these songs. There's only a lot of the time some bits are maybe better than others. Um, but with this one, yeah, like I said, I liked pretty much all of it. It was sort of quite a calm, nice sounding song. Maybe a little bit of cheesy rap thrown in as well, which I quite liked. Then a sort of bit of a choir sort of kind of sound at the end going on as well. So I thought this was just a good sort of well-rounded song. Yeah, I agree with everything that you said. I also like this one. This would probably be a second one that I would put on a potential playlist. Um, again, as you said there, it had all this sort of mixture of the other stuff which it had in other songs, but it didn't mix too much in between. It, I say it kept the same sort of genres all together all throughout the song. If I, again, hopefully that makes sense in some regards. Uh, this is one I was referring to where he talks about his um, rapping, um, rapping stuff. So I've quote here. So he writes in the song, um, <clears throat> who knows if I flow um, on a song, it'll get no radio play. My flow's not great. Okay, I confiscate. I, I, confis- I confiscate with people. So I sort of taking the mick and his flows don't on that good and it probably won't get played on the radio and stuff <laughs> what but yeah i found my head bopping this one i can imagine being in the festival your hands waving um and it has a sort of it did have sort of a a poppy catchy and we keep going back to it it's, i don't they're not proper choruses the sort of part of the verse and the chorus so yeah. it's really hard about it wherever that was <laughs> it was catchy not enough to really remember it but <laughs> remember to make note on that and i said it's a hand wave one and um he also quoted that um, he's trying to be, I'm trying to be so cool when he obviously feels like he's not, but I think the stuff's quite good. So yeah, another good song. The next one was Run and Go. This was a, a do, 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 do song. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I, I'm not always a big fan of those sorts of songs. Um, had a sudden change up as well in the middle of it. Suddenly went very soft and started playing a, like the piano. I don't have much to say about this one. It, it was it was okay-ish, not one of the better ones. Yeah, uh, I did, again didn't mind this one. I, yeah, best way to explain yeah, the do 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 song. I kind of almost put like Sesame Street here, um, kind of child's TV show kind of thing, which I've been criticised for saying before. But for this one, definitely is the <laughs> case there. Um, and yeah, then the only thing I've put here is that sort of that in the middle bit where we had a change up, but not like a change we've had with the other songs. So this one was just literally piano playing really softly. Here. Again, I've put here like the band Queen, the sort of thing I imagine Queen would have done. It changed the song completely and it's just been playing on the piano. So sort of and again, it's a different side, which we haven't had here already. So even when you think you've heard it all and it's all the same, it's still a, a surprising change um, throughout. So again, fits in well with the album. Um, but I agree with you, probably not as good as some of the other ones that we've had, but still good. So then we had Fake You Out. I'm not a fan of the, the sort of beeping sci-fi stuff, to be honest. It's quite dancey, this one, and a bit of rap. Um, I just felt this song felt a little bit messy. It didn't kind of go together, maybe as well as some of the other ones uh, did. So, yeah, not so keen on this one, but parts of it were, were okay. Um, yeah, so I've, I've put here, sort of, you've got this electro pop, indie pop rock kind of thing mix. Again, we're mixed up with all of them. Um, this one reminds me now mostly like the Killers, um, who also had sort of weird sort of pop sounds sometimes, um, um, poppy, but indie rock as well. Um, but then with all that going on, you then still have the rap that comes in. Again, I actually didn't mind this too much, but again, I don't mind a bit sort of electro kind of sounds um, to it there. But like I said, for me, this was like killers in comparison to some of the other ones. The next up was Guns for Hands. Had a quite upbeat start. And not a bad start, didn't mind that. Then it had a complete change up. It became very rappy. 
But I, I thought this one was fairly good overall. Um, and as, as the song kind of went on, I was like, you know, actually, she's pretty good. And I've put one of the best songs. I'd probably say it's probably the second best song after, after Scream. Yeah, I also like this one. This would be also another one I may would have considered put on um, a playlist. Again, like with one of the earlier ones where I said about it's got like a real sort of upbeat, nice sounding feel to it for something that obviously has quite a sinister title um, to it. And then we later find out, I think, the song's influence is about um, committing suicide. So not that he knew anyone, it's just in, in suicide in a general sense. Um, so he had this sort of first part of the song, um, sort of the, the, the sort of indie kind of thing. And then the second half was then sort of the rap um, elements to it there. And again, I think it worked quite well. Um, did he get the message across? No, probably because of the style of music it was. But overall, as a whole song, looking back at it, I thought it was pretty good. And again, like I said, when I go back to this album, I will look forward to listening to some of these ones that we've liked so far. So then we had Trees, got off to a slow start. Um, it suddenly sort of became a lot louder had a fast beat to it it was long instrumentals in this one but this wasn't one of my favourites um, yeah this one was interesting so I felt this from the start of it and even throughout even though it changed quite a bit quite a powerful emotional feeling song um, even though there's no clues from sort of the title at all um, and then it was weird with this one because the main lyrics, some of the main lyrics are just him saying hello. But each time that he did, at different parts, it was totally different to the parts from the time before, um, which I thought was quite, and again, I just found this sort, even though it had this sort of clubby, dancey vibe to it, I still felt there was this emotional kind of element to it as well, the way of singing, even the last bit he was doing hello in his voice. So it may, really got me thinking on, on this one from there. There wasn't any information I found on it, but um, I, I liked it in a, in a strange way comparison to the others. And the, the last one then was Truce. Um, so this is the experimental song for me. Um, <laughs> uh, just because it was so, it was kind of so normal. Um, so like you were saying earlier with the other one, like kind of this is the opposite of experimental but for them it's experimental so this is the one for me that was the was the most unusual by their standards so i just wrote down like is this like a ballad to kind of finish things off and yeah it was um uh, you know i just it just got me thinking though when i was kind of listening to the song i was just thinking is there like a story behind the album because i'm not very good at actually picking up on the stories of songs and stuff it's just got me thinking um, from just from the lyrics of this song. Is it, was there something deeper um, about each song or, or not? Um, but yeah, just a kind of soft ending. Probably a good way to, to end the album, um, just to kind of ease its way out to finish things off. So yeah, it's all right. Um, yeah, I actually forgot this one. You're thinking, right, this would be... Well, I said before that one's the experiment. This would be the sort of opposite experimental song. Um, you're right, actually. So I'll, I'll take that one back. Um, yeah, I, I think the reason I thought of it differently because I almost felt like this was like a bonus track. It's almost like the album had to end from the previous song and this was just like, almost like a hidden or, or, or bonus track. Totally different to what they've done there before. And even though it was a really sad, emotional song, I did feel the song before felt more emotional then this one, which I found weird, even though the lyrics were clearly where, I gotta put some of them down here, that I'll say, um, like, but also referred to this one, this felt like a bit like, because we listened to it before, Coldplay, but like a more deep, full, sad meaning, even though Coldplay do sad song, but I think it's a bit more cryptic, whilst this just felt sad <laughs> by the sound of it and with the lyrics. So like, stay alive, stay alive for me. Um, you will die, but now you will uh, live but now your life is free so real sort of um, um, oh yeah, take pride in what uh, what is sure to die um, so but uh, despite that again I actually really quite like this one as well and again as I said before really would like to listen to this album game without having to sort of 
think too much into the lyrics. And in terms of there being a, a story to the album, I, I don't know. I can't answer that because I don't know. But I don't think there was. I just think each song individually had their mm-hmm. own sort of individual um, meanings rather than a, an ongoing album story as such. So, yeah, mm-hmm. but I say a really good good way to... Well, not a good way to say that. A, a nice song to end the album. Yeah. Um, so if we're going to sum up, I think maybe what you you said throughout the album review there was that that there may be, I'm trying to think maybe why I didn't like some of the songs more, even though there's elements there that I liked. Maybe it's because, like you said, this kind this kind of lacking a, a real chorus for most of these songs. You know, it's like verses and it all changes so much. So, and I do like you know a real nice chorus um so maybe that could be one of the reasons um but but still saying that i did enjoy listening to it um and as i said there were a couple of songs there that i quite liked and yeah just kind of can't really believe that i've never come across them before i mean have they had any big hits I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I just on that one. So I did, did have a look. So I, like I was like you and Tree because um, when we were talking about the start, and I, I got way off exactly who they are and what they were about and stuff. And as I said at the start, they have had since this album a couple of other albums which did do better in the charts, both in the UK and the US. But in terms of singles as well, none of them really sort of hit the charts that that well um i know in the uk there was one that came up it was either 20 or at 12 um mm. but apart from that no but obviously the albums have done well so they've obviously got a bit of a following and uh, i do know that and i said it, it would make me want to listen to some of the other stuff as well and as you said yeah the reason probably like i said yeah the songs weren't they were good but didn't sort of stand out and that probably shows and probably they haven't had like a chart top here yeah. but as an album they seem to do um quite well and i think just missing that yeah sort of stand out kind of song really but yeah i think there's something to it and i think it's one of those i think if you heard them again you'd probably go oh that could be 21 pilots but you probably wouldn't be able to say well it's that song or you're going to probably know the band more than you probably know the song, if that makes sense. And that's probably the best way to, to look at 21 Pilots, in my eyes. Okay. Well, I think that um, concludes our album review then. So thank you again for the request. And, um, yeah, we have a few more on our list to do, but feel free to, um, to request uh, more albums. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Goodbye.